CEO Stuart Butterfield tweeting, quote, Next week, Slack has its quarterly earnings call, so I have some extra eyes on me. I'll use that attention to amplify black voices and also condemn not just the violence, but the indifference, the lack of compassion and the deflection uh, and excuses. Butterfield also pledging and matching donations to 10 different social justice organizations. Slack CEO Stuart Butterfield joins us uh, now. A very good afternoon to you, Stuart. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, you've clearly, as I just alluded to, and uh, looking at all your, your tweets over the weekend, been, been deeply affected by uh, the scenes uh, and actions of the last week or so. Uh, I mean, Stuart, talk us through a little bit more uh, how it's resonated at, at your company at Slack and, and what you're doing uh, in, in response. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think it's had a big impact, obviously, on, on our black employees, but I think on, on everyone. And to some degree, I'm, I'm hopeful that this can be a turning point, that there can be enough awareness and there can be enough um, speaking out on behalf of uh, non-black people to make this a norm um, and to kind of shift the, the goalposts of the conversation at a national level. I'm not especially optimistic about that, but that is the hope. Uh, I think a lot of employees are sad and angry. And I think particularly over this weekend, as the narrative has shifted from one of, uh, you know, expressing a solidarity to, uh, in, in some cases, a distraction of the, the riots and property damage, um, it's, it, it feels a little like we're slipping back into the same old. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult time right now. And, and, and the hope, I think, certainly is that there is a, a broader debate that happens. There are changes in a societal way that, that actually start to take root, Stuart. In terms of what that means at Slack, I know you recently uh, released a diversity report. How do you think about diversity and how do you think about creating opportunities within the company uh, to folks who maybe have been underserved or underprivileged and are looking to basically be able to climb that socioeconomic ladder. Yeah, it, it's been an important issue for us um, for for many years. I mean, ne since near the, the beginning, I think when we realized uh, we were 20 employees or something like that, and, and the balance was not reflective of the, the greater society at all. Um, you know, one of the things that we would love to see, and I, I really want to stress that Slack is not perfect. I mean, we there's no magic bubble around the company that um, keeps the rest of the world out. We exist in a larger system, and that larger system has a lot of systemic factors that are racist, that disadvantage uh, black and, and brown people. Um, the areas where we've tried to make an emphasis are when people are, are in the company, the opportunities for promotion should be equal, the um, compensation should be equal. And I, I think we're still... Uh, a long way from perfect on that. I think we are slightly more representative of the national population than a lot of other technology companies, but there's a long way to go there. We've also been pretty experimental. We have a, a program called Rising Tides, which pairs women of color uh, in the organization with executives to, to sponsor them and to mentor them. Um, and uh, the next chapter, which is a program for hiring formerly incarcerated people, uh, we don't have any answers, I don't think. We're, we're listening, we're paying attention, and we're trying things. Um, Stuart, I, I wondered whether you thought tech more broadly could be empowered to reduce racism in, in the workplace, whether uh, it allows people to make changes more quickly uh, once those decisions have been made and, and, and see that filter through the workplace more quickly than perhaps if we were still 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, um, I mean, there's definitely been a positive impact of technology in the sense of the ease with which um, events can be recorded. Um, and, and distributed. I think that has obviously made a difference. Um, and ideally, uh, you know, technology is a force for, for good, um, but it is a force which, which generally augments our human ability. So, and that could be, in that sense, used for, for both good and bad. Um, it is heartening to see within the uh, community of technology employees um, a lot of support for the movement. I guess my follow up, Stuart, to, to that is, uh, is what your take is uh, to the debate uh, that separate debate, but, but certainly related debate we've been having uh, on our network about Facebook and, and about Twitter and Jack Dorsey and uh, Mark Zuckerberg's actions in particular uh, around hateful or, or, or perhaps inaccurate speech on their platforms and, and whether you feel that these social media platforms overall have been a force for good or uh, a force to accentuate, accentuate the, the polarizations that exist in society today. Uh, both. I mean, it's a little bit of all of all of the above. You know, I, I think back though, um, had the video of George Floyd not been available and widely distributed, I don't think 
it would have got the attention. And the same thing is true um, for Eric Garner, uh, Philando Castile. Um, in, in many cases, not we didn't have the video evidence, but uh, the conversation was um, uh, accelerated or accentuated through the use of technology. People like Breonna Taylor, uh, Michael Brown, Sandra Bland. And that makes a difference. Um, I, I definitely think it can be used by humans to kind of dig in and reinforce their existing prejudices and their existing convictions. Um, so, uh, you know, netting that out is, is pretty hard to do. Um, and I think the, the time spent thinking about the impact is important. Yeah. Um, just to shift gears a little bit, I realize that you're going to be reporting earnings a little bit later in the week. So you're in a quiet period right now, but I mean, my goodness, what a year this has been coronavirus and the shift now to, to the reopening, the slow reopening of the economy. Now we're talking about civil unrest. What does all of this, I guess, mean for your ability to bring your workforce back into offices? And not only that, the conversations you are having with your customers uh, who have been adopting your platform and your services in, in such a great way in the last couple of months. It's it's a really interesting conversation, and I think the one common theme of the conversations that I have with my my peers, uh, CEOs of other technology companies or the software companies, and with customers is that no one knows. I mean, no one can can truly predict um, uh, when we will be back to normal or what normal will look like in the future. And I think a lot to a large extent, it's dependent on what everyone else does. I mean, none of us can really act unilaterally. Um, if uh, the ability to work from home or, or work remotely becomes really a, a standard feature of employment generally, it'll apply to us just as, as much as anyone. Um, we've managed to make the transition pretty effectively. If you measure it purely in terms of, of output and productivity, it's a little bit harder to know how um, how long that lasts and, and whether, you know, over time as people become more and more fatigued and, and more tired, they're, they're able to contribute in the same way. But... Um, it's it's an interesting time, and, and hopefully we're effective in able uh, in supporting people like uh, Veterans Affairs, which um, a few months before this started, you know, started deploying Slack to twenty thousand people. They operate the biggest uh, unified healthcare system in the United States, and obviously under a lot of pressure right now. Um, but also just you know regular companies: TD Ameritrade, Target, Royal Bank of Canada, um, IBM, and. Uh, Especially heartening, I think, for us has been the use of Slack by um, not-for-profit or emergency response or uh, relief organizations. Stuart, uh, you originally booked a talk in detail about work from home, uh, but uh, not, not the case today. Um, we thank you, though, for coming on and talking about a much more important issue and, and, and hopefully come back soon to talk about work from home stuff in more detail. Thank you so much, Wilfred Morgan.